So what do you do when you go to the beach with your friends and they have a paddleboard and you don't? We've tossed around the idea of buying a paddleboard and every time we consider it, we talk ourselves out of it basically because we have very little space in our condo to store something that size. Besides, when we are ready to paddleboard, it's so easy to just rent one for a few hours. For the most part though, rather than be floating on top of the water, I would rather be swimming around in my own personal aquarium, like today. So while they paddle around above, I will join the fish below. While this part of Tumon Bay is not the best place to snorkel, it is better for swimming and it's where all the tourists hang out in the water where they feed the fish and destroy what little coral there is left on this part of the reef. There are about 400 identified species of coral in Guam and most are struggling from environmental effects. If you head out farther to the fringing and the barrier reefs, the corals seem to be doing better but here where swimmers gather and fisherfolk fish, the coral suffers. There has been some discussion lately about some of the reefs making a little comeback since tourism has been eliminated by COVID and the number of people in the water have, has been significantly lower. I have noticed now that when I'm in the water that the fish sure seem to be much more timid and shy as compared only 18 months earlier when they were being hand fed by all the tourists and the staghorn corals seem to be flourishing because nobody is standing on them and crushing them. I'm no expert by any means on reef ecology or corals, but I have learned that while the Caribbean has two different types of staghorn corals, Guam has at least five different species. Staghorn corals are the most predominant type of coral in these waters. I've also come to understand that many staghorns in the Caribbean have recently died. In the early 1980s, their populations declined by over 90% and a downward trend has continued since then. Disease, abnormal water temperatures, and physical damage from hurricanes are the major causes of this massive decline. The staghorns in the Pacific are by no means safe from a similar fate. Another common degrading effect on the reefs is due to coral bleaching. Bleaching occurs when corals are stressed by changes in conditions such as temperature, light, or nutrients. When this happens, coral expel symbiotic algae living in their tissues, causing them to turn completely white. When coral bleaches though, it is not dead. Corals can survive a bleaching event, but they are under more stress and are then subject to higher mortality rates. Recently, Guam experienced two island-wide bleaching events in the summers of 2013 and 2014 because of high water temperatures, as well as high mortality from extreme low tides beginning in 2014 to the end of 2015. The total mortality for Guam's staghorn populations was approximately 50% over the course of these three years. While offering a wide range of beaches and healthy coral reefs, Guam is home to some of the nicest and most easily accessible snorkeling spots in the Western Pacific. Just beyond the shore lie warm azure waters, thousands of reef fish, sheltered coral gardens, and sometimes for the luckiest snorkelers, black tip reef sharks. Many snorkeling spots are accessible from the shore, edged by narrow fringing reefs that end in a drop-off facing the open sea. The coral, which rises to the surface of the water, literally drops toward the ocean depths in a wealth of colors and shapes. Like I mentioned earlier, the fringing reefs are the least traveled to places and is where the reef is the healthiest. And if you are dive certified, there are literally hundreds of spots that you can enjoy. Most days, I just enjoy lounging around on the reef in the shallows, and today is no exception. I hope you enjoy the rest of my little swim. <laughs>